Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about compounds that you might come across in your daily life. Today I'll be talking about coffee. So I've made this video to show you what you drink when you have a cup of coffee and how the atoms of the compounds that make coffee bond together. So in front of me I have the ingredients that make coffee. First, caffeine, then milk and sugar and of course water. These are molymods and I've used these to create the chemical structures of the compounds that make up coffee. In these compounds only four elements will appear. So first we have carbon which will be represented by the black balls. And so carbon was discovered in 1789 by Antonio Lavoisier. Next we have nitrogen and so nitrogen will be represented by the blue balls. And nitrogen was discovered in 1772 by chemist and physician Daniel Rutherford. Then we have oxygen. And oxygen will be represented by the red balls. Oxygen was also discovered in 1772, but this time by Joseph Priestley. And finally, we have hydrogen. And so hydrogen will be represented by the white semispheres or the white balls. So hydrogen was discovered by English physicist Henry Cavendish in 1766 and funnily enough scientists had been producing hydrogen before it was even recognised as an element. So this is the chemical structure of caffeine and once again the chemical formula for caffeine is C8, H10, N4O2. Each of these different coloured balls or atoms have a different number of bonds. I've talked about this in the video about electron shells and the Lewis dot structure, but I'll be explaining it again in this video. So let's go through the bonds. First, let's look at carbon. These carbon atoms have four bonds, so they can bond with either four separate atoms, or they can have double bonds with atoms. Let's take a look at some examples shown in this structure. First, let's look at an example of single bonds or four separate bonds. So as you can see, this carbon atom has one bond to a nitrogen atom and it has three separate bonds to three different hydrogen atoms. Now let's look at an example of a double bond and two single bonds. So we have many examples of that. So we have this carbon atom bonding with one nitrogen atom and another carbon atom but it had a double bond to this oxygen atom. And so another example is this carbon atom having a single bond with this hydrogen atom and a single bond to this nitrogen atom but it has a double bond to another nitrogen atom. So let's look at nitrogen. So nitrogen has three bonds and in this chemical structure there are only one example of nitrogen with a single bond and with a double get. Now let's look at nitrogen. So nitrogen has three bonds and in this chemical structure, there are once again an example of nitrogen with a single bond and nitrogen with a double bond. So here we can see this nitrogen atom having a single bond to this carbon atom and has a double bond to another carbon atom. And so this nitrogen atom has three separate bonds, each uh, with a bond to another carbon atom. Now let's look at oxygen. So oxygen can have two bonds. So you can either have two single bonds with two different atoms, or can it only have one double bond with one atom. In this chemical structure, there are only examples of oxygen atoms with double bonds. And so, as we can see here, this oxygen atom has a double bond to this carbon atom, and the same goes with this oxygen atom has a double bond with this carbon atom. Finally, let's look at hydrogen. So hydrogen only has one bond, and as you can guess, it is impossible for hydrogen to have a double bond, unless it was a different isotope of hydrogen. But in this case, there's only room for one bond to go with the hydrogen. So here are the hydrogen bonds with the carbon atoms. Mm -hmm. So each of the hydrogen atoms, so there are three different hydrogen atoms bonding to the same carbon atom, or in this case, there's one hydrogen atom bonding to a carbon atom. So next, let's talk about water. Water has been on this planet for almost 4 billion years, so it was here when the Earth had been formed after the Big Bang. 
and water is all around us, in the sky when it rains, snows, hails, and this is in our homes, in our taps, toilets, showers, and it covers around 70% of the globe, and 96.5% of all water is in the oceans. So water is very, very, very important. Even though water has been on this planet for ages, it was chemist Henry Cavendish, the same chemist who discovered oxygen, who discovered the composition of water when he experimented with hydrogen and oxygen and mixed these elements together to create an explosion. So let's look at what water compound looks like. So this is the chemical structure of a water molecule and so it looks very simple. And so the chemical formula for water is H2O which I'm sure you've heard of many times before. This molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And they're both bonded to the same oxygen atom, as there's only one oxygen atom. And so this means that the hydrogen atoms cannot bond with any other atom, as the same goes with the oxygen, as the bonds of all the atoms are filled up. So now, let's look at lactose. Now, lactose was discovered in milk in 1619, and you probably have more lactose than you think you do. You might have some cereal, and lactose is in milk, and believe it or not, lactose also makes up cereal. And lactose is also in your yoghurt, cheese, bread, and if you're having ice cream on a hot day, there's lactose in ice cream as well. So let's look at the chemical structure of lactose. The chemical formula for lactose is C12H22O11, which means there's 45 atoms in lactose, so that is a lot. So when we first look at lactose, we can see that there are no double bonds between any of the atoms. For instance, let's look at carbon, and once again, carbon has four bonds, so here every carbon atom bonds with four separate atoms. Let's have an example, so this carbon atom bonds with a hydrogen atom, bonds with another carbon atom, and it bonds with two separate oxygen atoms. If we have another example, this carbon atom bonds with two separate hydrogen atoms, and has a bond with an oxygen atom, and has a bond with a separate carbon atom. And so let's look at oxygen, and here we can see examples of oxygen atoms with single bonds and not double bonds. Because here you can see oxygen bonding with two carbon atoms. Or you can see here bonding with one hydrogen atom and one carbon atom. And of course the hydrogen atom can only bond with one other atom, and in this case it bonds with the oxygen atom. Or here it bonds with the carbon atom. Finally, let's look at glucose, and the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And that may sound fam very familiar, as you've heard of it in biology, as glucose is very important in the process of photosynthesis. And I've talked about glucose in a previous video, and also about the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Anyway, in this case, we're adding some glucose or sugar to our coffee. So the chemical structure of glucose and once again, the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And once again, the chemical structure of glucose has no double bonds. So the carbon atoms here all have four separate atoms. So here has a bond with a hydrogen atom, a bond to an oxygen atom, a bond to two different carbon atoms. So that's four bonds. And once again, the oxygen has two separate bonds. So in this case, this oxygen atom has a bond with a hydrogen atom and then a bond to a carbon atom and of course the hydrogen atom only has one bond so here it can bond with the oxygen atom or this hydrogen atom bond with the carbon atom and so these are all the compounds that make up coffee